I have with me a very interesting couple. They travel all around the world. They have covered 85 countries in all seven continents. Joining us now, Ankita Rajendran and Anand Mohan. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. you specialize in traveling to offbeat countries. Yes. Why? Well, I find that a lot of people are very afraid to break the mainstream norm of travels. So what I'm hoping to do is uh, show people that you can go completely off the beaten track uh, and explore destinations unheard of. And uh, I would say explore cultures that have, are completely different from our own. And you can learn a whole new perspective about uh, life and the world. A few examples of offbeat countries. I think uh, something that comes to my mind uh, right away is uh, Eritrea. Mm -hmm. come, uh, I've never heard his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the Horn of Africa. Um, some other places that we've, uh, we've, we've gone to are Sao Tome and Principe. It's a twin island on, on the equator. Uh, it's an ex-Portuguese uh, 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 colonized country. A um, few places in South America, Honduras was one of the places that we went to recently. It's uh, not as off-traveled as mm -hmm. the usual uh, Puerto Rico or uh, Costa Rica, but Honduras is still out there uh, and I would say these are some of the offbeat countries uh, that we did. Have you mastered the art of traveling cheaper now? Definitely. I think it comes with practice. The more often you do um, off we travels, it becomes more affordable. Uh, you know rule of thumbs to follow, when to travel, off-season. Some of the cheaper tips would be travel during off-season. Mm -hmm. um, don't mind the layovers. Even if it's long, you save a lot. Um, I would say try to stay in Airbnbs. They are very affordable and these days very well maintained. Um, look for home stays where possible. It also gives you a good cultural experience. Um, these are some of the tips that I would say are very handy. Yeah. Right. For those people who aspire to travel, give a list of such countries. Uh, uh, what, what do we call as offbeat or for? Um, I would say if you're starting to travel, stay away from the offbeat. Start small. Start mm -hmm. with easy places, especially if you're traveling from India. There are so many beautiful countries just in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Thailand. These are all tourist hubs. Um, they're not necessarily offbeat, but these are great uh, places where you can do mistakes. You can afford mistakes. You'll still be safe. Uh, they're, you know, they're pocket friendly for most of us from India. So, and the visas are easy. So I would say these are great places to start. If you want to go offbeat, uh, you can start with Kenya in Africa, I would say. I wouldn't say it's offbeat just now um, because it is growing in popularity. But if you're keen on doing an, a safari, Kenya is one of the be most beautiful, most affordable safaris we've ever done. Um, so that's, that's a great place to start. So if you're looking for affordable, don't go offbeat right away. Start small. Uh, but, you know, there's also so many countries in Central Asia that you can go to, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, all very affordable, half the cost of many other countries in the world, right, but right. just as beautiful as uh, any, you know, any developed country, I would say. Right. So those are some of the tips. Yeah. For many, overseas travel is still a dream and many don't even try thinking that it's beyond their reach. Uh, where should they begin? I think the first step is the hardest uh, when you, like Ankita said, you know, choose a couple of overseas destinations that are uh, more of a tourist hub that makes you get into the rhythm of things. I think that would be the good starting point uh, to go to a touristy country to begin with, to get into the thick of things and then you get more comfortable with, uh, you, you understand how things work and then you slowly expand your radius and try to reach other countries as well and reach the offbeat uh, destinations as well. That's what I would advise as well. How about you? I would say start saving. Uh -huh. If travel uh, is a priority, you need. It's not cheap. Uh, even the affordable countries are not cheap anymore. Um, but I would say start by saving. If you're a double income household, or even if you're a single income household, it doesn't matter. If mm. it is a priority and you wish to see the different uh, countries, uh, put away 20 to 25 percent of what you make every month without fail. Do your due diligence and one day you will be able to see the world um, as as you know if you dream to see the world this is how you get started you have to save you have to plan ahead you have to make time for it uh, it's not easy but it's worth doing that's right. what i would say what's the average cost say for instance a couple with two children to be able to travel to these countries like sri lanka or any of these other countries like vietnam cambodia i think i want to give a ballpark uh, figure I would probably go with I would say 3,000 US dollars uh, and if you do the math on uh, 
the rupees uh, you probably have to multiply that by 80 um, um I, I would say 3000 us dollars is a good ballpark yeah 3000 us dollars would be a good starting figure yeah yeah what next which is your next destination well we're hoping to get to algeria uh, mm -hmm. pending visa um, and then after that i do a solo trip to syria uh, those are the two ones big ones for uh, uh, october why should one travel what's one big takeaway in your experience I think it uh, widens one's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have lenses through which we view the world. Uh, everyone has a cultural uh, lens and right. that's the lens with which we all grow up. Uh, traveling just widens that perspective. You tend to see the world from someone else's perspective, uh, understand what really uh, it means for them, you know, their uh, views and takes on the world. And it also goes on to show that you can find happiness in the smallest of the places. You don't really have to be rich to be happy. Uh, we've, we've, we've gone to a few places where we see people have very limited resources, yet right. they find uh, happiness that you would never ever find in another, uh, let's say, well-developed uh, country. So I think it kind of gives you that perspective uh, to approach life and uh, uh, just have a jolly good time here. So for Indian passport holders, is a visa an issue often? Yes, uh, the, if you plan to go offbeat, there's going to be a lot of challenges, a lot of roadblocks. Um, partly because there's not a lot of information out there for us Indian passport holders. Um, and even the information that I do find, I don't know if it's reliable or mm -hmm. trustworthy. Uh, in which case, I have to reach out to the embassies or the consulates. I have to go through the motions uh, as you would with any other country. But sometimes um, it's not... It's more expensive to do these visas, but if you determine they can be done, there will be challenges like I said, but they're also passable and right. uh, it just gives you a unique non-touristy experience, a very authentic travel experience, right. which I, I feel um, wouldn't be that easily, you know, it wouldn't, you wouldn't right. experience raw travel the way it's meant to be. Um, but I think uh, I'm sharing as much as possible on my Instagram page, which is wayfarer underscore Anki um, and on my blog. Um, I'm hoping to change perspective uh, on what travel should look like. Um, there are more authentic experiences out there and, and I'm hoping that will change for in us Indian passport holders um, if we're just willing to try a little harder right. to get these visas. Yeah. Thank you so much for thank your time you, you and so uh, offbeat globe trotters in that sense, Ankita and Anand sharing their travel tips. In Chennai, Sam Daniel, Find the TV.